The second part of the preliminaries. In the second part, I shall endeavor to show the rise, progress, and declination of modern prudence. The date of this kind of policy is to be computed, as was shown, from those inundations of Goths, Vandals, Huns, and Lombards that overwhelmed the Roman Empire. But as there is no appearance in the bulk or constitution of modern prudence that should that she should ever have been able to come up and grapple with the ancient, or so, so something of necessity must have interposed, whereby this came to be enervated, and that to receive strength and encouragement. And this was the execrable reign of the Roman emperors, taking rise from that Felix Scelus, the arms of Caesar, in which storm the ship of the Roman commonwealth was forced to disburthen herself of that precious freight, which never since could emerge or raise the head but in the gulf of Venice. It is said in scripture, Thy evil is of thyself, O Israel, to which answers that of the moralist, nemo nocetur nisi ex se, as also the whole matter of the politics, at present this example of the Romans who, through a negligence committed in their agrarian laws, let in the sink of luxury, and fortified the inestimable treasure of liberty for themselves and posterity. Their agrarian laws were such whereby their lands ought to have been divided among the people, either without mention of a colony, in which case they were not obliged to change their abode, or with mention, and upon condition of a colony, in which case they were to change their abode and leave the city, leaving the city, to plant themselves upon the land so assigned. The lands assigned, or that ought, or that ought to have been assigned, in either of these ways, were of three kinds such as were taken from the enemy and dis distributed unto the people, or as such as were taken from the enemy and under color of being reserved unto the public use, were by stealth possessed by the nobility, or such as were brought with the public money to be distributed. Of the laws offered in these cases, those which divided the lands taken from the enemy or purchased with the public money never occasioned any dispute but such as drove that dis dispossessing the nobility of their usurpations and dividing the common purchase of the sword among the people were never touched but they were but they caused earthquakes nor could they nor could ever be obtained by the people or being obtained be observed by the nobility who not only preserved their prey but growing vastly rich upon it bought the people by degrees quite out of those shares that had been conferred upon them. This the Gracchi, coming too late to perceive, found the balance of the commonwealth to be lost, but putting the people, when they had least force, by forcible means unto the recovery of it, did ill, seeing it neither could nor did tend unto any more than to show them by worse effects, that what the wisdom of their leaders had discovered was true, for, quite contrary unto what hath happened in Oceana, where the balance falling unto the people, they have overthrown the nobility, the nobility of Rome, under the conduct of Sulla, overthrew the people and the commonwealth, seeing Sulla first introduced that new balance which was the foundation of the succeeding monarchy, in the plantation of military colonies, instituted by his distribution of the conquered lands, not now of enemies but of citizens, unto forty-seven legions of his soldiers. So that how he came to be dictator perpetuus, or other magistrates to succeed him in like power, is no miracle. These military colonies, in which manner succeeding emperors continued as Augustus by the distribution of veterans, whereby he had overcome Brutus and Cassius, to plant their solid uh, their soldiery, consisted of such as I conceive, 
were they that are called milites beneficiarii, in regard that the tenure of their lands was by way of benef benefices, that is, for life and upon condition of duty or service in the war, upon their own charge. These benefices, Alexander Servus, Se Sever Severus, granted unto the heirs of the incumbents, but upon the same conditions, and such was the dominion by which the Roman emperors gave their balance. But to the beneficiaries, as was no less than necessary for the safety of the prince, a matter of eight thousand, by the example of Augustus, were added, which departed not from his sides, but were his perpetual guard, called Praetorian bands, though these, according to the incurable flaw already observed in this kind of government, became the most frequent butchers of their lords that are to be found in story. Thus far, the Roman monarchy is so much the same with that at this day in Turkey, consisting of a camp and a horse quarter, a camp in regard to her spahis and janissaries, the perpetual guard of the prince, except they also chance to be licorice after his blood, and an horse quarter in regard of the distribution of his whole land unto tenants for life, upon condition of continual service, or as often as they shall be commanded at their own charge by timars, being a word which they say signifies benefices, that it shall save me a labor of opening the government.